here with my team. Uh, I have Encik Azrul is with me from uh, Residential Division, uh, MOE. And who else is in my team? Uh, that's it only. Okay. And without further ado, I think we should start and perhaps we should introduce ourselves. My name is Noor Azlina. I'm the project manager for G the uh, Genesis program and the MOE. So we will start introducing everyone. Uh, may we start with uh, perhaps Puan Sharifa? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever part of the country or the world you are in. I'm not too sure who is actually attending this. Uh, my name is Sharifa Zaida Nolisha. I'm um, actually a MOXI president, which is representing the OGSE uh, industry, uh, representing 500 companies in the whole supply chain of uh, oil and gas, and also the MMC oil and gas CEO, um, which is an engineering consultant company. Um, I'm assuming that I am here because I, Puan Azlina wants me to talk up from the perspective of the employer. So okay. basically that's why I'm here, <laughs> I think. Yes, yes definitely. <laughs> and yeah. I also come from a boarding school um, in my past life. Uh, so maybe that will contribute a little bit to what you want to speak uh, later. All right. Thank you, Puan Sharifa. May we continue? Karina, perhaps? This is the first time I met you, Karina. So it's yes. good to have you around. Yes, and I'm completely, I think everyone's new to me here. I've never met anyone on the group, but it's lovely meeting you all. Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Um, my name is Karina Razali. I believe I'm here as in my capacity as um, the current president of the National Association for Gifted and Talented Children, Malaysia. Call ourselves NAGCM. Um, uh, we, uh, I've been a member of NAGCM since 2014, and we are a group of civil society uh, individuals. Mostly, our majority would be from a parent group, so we are more of a parent network group. But we also have uh, uh, professionals and individuals who are interested in gifted education and gifted um, uh, psychology as well. Thank you. I see. All right. Okay. Uh, in my professional capacity, I'm an epidemiologist, so that's something completely different. Well, what, what is but that? I'm also a sorry. A your professional capacity is epidemiologist, public health. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's great to know. All right. <laughs> Thank you. you. And I, taking the cue from the previous presenter, I'm also a product of a fully a residential school. Thank you. Which where? At TKC. What's, TKC. Long time ago. <laughs> okay. So that's Paul Sharifa, right? Uh, I'm from uh, the rival, SPF. <laughs> 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 okay. A friendly rival. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> well, thanks. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we move next to whom, whoever related. Uh, Marina, perhaps? Marina? Introduce yourself, Marina. We can't hear you. Something goes wrong. Hello? Yes, OK. OK. Good. All right, go ahead. Something's wrong with my mic, so I have to remove this. <laughs> uh, my name is Marina, and uh, I'm from Yayasan Peneraju Pendidikan Bumi Putra. Um, actually, uh, I'm not quite sure uh, in what capacity I'll be here, but I think uh, because uh, of our meeting previously, uh, that could have uh, triggered the invitation. Um, uh, we are uh, looking into education and training, especially for Bumi Putra, um, to elevate their uh, in economy, sorry, what was it? Socio-economy status. So, um, so this is part of, uh, the, I think this is one of the initiatives that we're quite interested in uh, the education of youth and the future of Malaysia. So um, uh, I guess that that could explain why I'm here. Um, I'm not a product of uh, SBP. <laughs> we, we don't need to be a product of SBP. Yeah, yeah so, <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, but my mom was, so oh, <laughs> I guess that could, yeah, 
<laughs> another rival of uh, TKC and uh, SDF, SSP. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big family come around now. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, perhaps Dataya. Hello, everybody. My name is Aya Rinkinen, and um, I work I work as a senior education specialist at the World Bank in in Malaysia, and I am um, actually uh, located in Kuala Lumpur. But now I just arrived yesterday last night to Finland to visit my family. So I'm, I'm originally from Finland and I'm on the leave of absence from my work at the Ministry of Education here, here in, in Finnish government. But um, I will be working uh, in Malaysia for three years and, and the first year is pretty much behind us and two more years left. And I look the education from a very wide perspective. So kind of seeing the continuum from early childhood education to all the way to the higher education sector and uh, kind of um, my background is um, in special education and uh, school leadership and governance and pedagogies and curriculums <laughs> and uh, so I'm trying to kind of uh, bring a broad broad view uh, to this issue and thank you for inviting me. Thank you Dr. Aya that is a very vast experience of you we're so happy to have you so that you can share lots on all the field that we have mentioned. OK, perhaps we go uh, next. Please introduce whoever I can call, um, whoever had a chance, perhaps. Yini, Yini, where are you? Hello, my name is Yini. I'm a consultant with World Bank. I'm currently supporting Aya in the work in uh, education in Malaysia as well. Thanks, Angelina. Yeah, I hope you can open your camera. Where are you? You're hiding yeah. behind the camera. Maybe <laughs> show yourself. Yes, uh, Dr. Yati asked you to open. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. okay, there you are. You need to see like your boss, all right? <laughs> okay, let's go around with whoever. Azrul, do you want to try yourself first? Introduce yourself. Thank you so much, uh, Puan Azina, for the invitation. Uh, good morning to all our colleagues from the industry and also from World Bank. This is like a Padu reunion, you know. Yini is from Padu previously, so was I. And uh, we have our colleagues from Padu. Hello, everybody. We miss you. Uh, so, this is wonderful to be here this morning. So, <laughs> all right. So, I would like to introduce my team from uh, Genius Insan College. We have Encik Mahes Pawi, we have Dr. Liana, Dr. Raihan, uh, Mr. Zulkarnin, and also Ehwan. Uh, currently, we have about uh, 364 students whose IQ is off the scales. Um, so, uh, we have uh, this is an, a hybrid institution with the university. Uh, currently, we are within the premise of University Science Islam Malaysia, where our students have the benefits of uh, being mentored by the professors and the lecturers in the university. So we are providing a very uh, conducive environment for the holistic development of the genius students. OK. So thank you very much, Ponazlina, uh, for the uh, invitation. And it's so good to see the colleagues from Padu again. For that reason, I'm inviting you, Dr. Yati. I know that how ex super excited you are meeting them all. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so with the last minute call, 11 plus last night. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Is there any members from your side, the Dayati? Perhaps I don't know because there are lots of names here. I don't know. Who All right, uh, maybe Che Mahis can introduce yourself, and then uh, Dr. Liana, Dr. Raihan, uh, Mr. Zul Karnin, and also Dr. Ehwan. Would you like to switch on your uh, video so that people can see you? Please go ahead. Yeah. We have these people. <laughs> yes, uh, Insan team, 
Can you just switch on your camera or are you very camera shy? Uh, but never mind. Um, you can do so later. But we have about five of us, uh, six including me, from inside. Okay. Thank you so much. So a nice meeting all of you, especially the industry players as well, because uh, we have this whole asset that we have with us that whose talent we need to cultivate and develop holistically. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, all right. Okay, Padu team, perhaps we start with Shamsul, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And good morning. Uh, so my name is Shamsul. Uh, I'm with Padu, uh, especially in uh, program management office. Uh, Dr. Yati, uh, I tak sebab jumpa <laughs> sebab mungkin dia dah keluar baru I masuk. So actually before Padu, uh, I'm with uh, UEM, United Engineers Malaysia. So uh, being inside Padu, uh, I have I mean, fully exposed to the program of Initiative 30, Program Pendidikan Pintar Cerdas by uh, the Puan Azlina, uh, which is an uh, eye opening. So I'm really happy to have the opportunity to be here today. Thank you very much. And also, I'm a product of SVP. <laughs> uh, but of course, like, I'm not the rival with all the ladies school. Like, eh? <laughs> so, so you must be the other end. And, uh, kita mix lah, mix. I'm from oh, Science Joho. Okay. Science Joho. All right, you. that's all from me. Thank you very much, Dr. Zlina, Puan Zlina, for the invitation this morning. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, right. the rest of our team, please. Uh, the... Padu? Uh, yeah. uh, All right, go uh, ahead, Nadia. Go ahead, Nadia. Assalamualaikum. Uh, hi, I'm from uh, Padu. Uh, my name is Nadia. Um, hi, Nadia. Hi, Dr. Yati. Good to see you. Hi, Yini. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, we are very happy to be here uh, because as uh, uh, Shamsu has mentioned, um, we have one uh, initiative specifically in the blueprint that is looking into, um, you know, uh, in touch with us. So we are very happy to uh, be here today and listen uh, to what uh, everyone can share uh, in your uh, professional and, you know, personal capacity. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Okay, next, perhaps, who? I roll. I roll. Who else? Please introduce. Uh, I I can't. I don't know who are they. Amira, Idayu. Uh, okay, assalamualaikum. Uh, I am Suraya. Uh, Hairo dia uh, left kejap ada hal dengan DTP. Um, I directly involved with this team. Uh, as uh, apa? Uh, I manage them lah, sort of. So I, I really glad that we can have this discussion. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks, Raya. Ikwan is from where? Ikwan? Encik Ikwan? Encik Ikwan? Oh, Ikwan is uh, Dr. Ikwan from uh, from KGI, Genius Inside. Oh, uh, so okay. Is uh, Dr. Liana Amalina. Dr. So, Liana, okay. And then? No, Raihan is from your side also. Raihan is also from our side. Dr. Raihan Zulkifli. All right. Nur Amira Idayu also from your side. Uh, no. Hi, Panazina. Amira here. Okay. Hi, I'm Amira from Padu. Let's Okay. Not, not a product of SB. But it's correct right for not being a product of residential. It's not, it's not the the criteria of joining this breakfast store. Yeah, or else I will not be joining as well. No, because someone someone set the precedent the early early stage set the stage already. So. Uh, okay. Uh, 
So though I am also a product of wine, but it's all right. So they not necessary. It's not a, a a criteria. Anyway, okay. I would like to know who is Zul Karnain. Zul, can you can you introduce us to Zul Karnain? A lecturer from uh, Genius Insight. He has been in the program since its inception. Uh, Zul, maybe you can. Okay, go ahead. Okay, assalamualaikum and uh, very good morning. Uh, I've uh, I've joined uh, College Genius Insight since uh, 2014. Uh, and I was the head of, uh, sorry, the, the uh, academic uh, uh, coordinator. Coordinator, yes. yes. Alright. Yes. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I think that is all. Uh, Doctor Rauda, is that you? Doctor oh, yes. Rauda. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Rauda, My name is Rauda. Yeah, I'm with Padu. Um, uh, I'm looking at teachers and leaders of Ministry of Education. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. So there are quite a number of people from Padu there. Uh, Azulina, Az Azatulina, where are you from? Hi, hi. hi. I'm from Padu. Uh, I'm looking yeah. at change management and communication. Hey, Dr. Yati, used to Dr. Yati for a bit. <laughs> yeah. So I miss her bubbliness, like uh, like it's Padu so different from when she left. But so I'm glad to be here to listen to all yeah. you guys and uh, see what we can pick up and, and, you know, do things better in my division. Thank you. Thank you, Azatulina. Um, we have um, more like. Is there anyone else who has like introduced? Shafui, Shafui. Who? I think that's Mahes Shafui. Uh, yeah. Mahes is also from our side. Uh, Cik Mahes was one of the pioneers of uh, Genius Insight or Permata Insight last time. Wow, then uh, Usi must be a lot to talk about. Uh, yeah. For Aaron, Aaron Hamilton from Australia, and perhaps a team member from Petronas. Hopefully, they can join us shortly, but we need to continue. Uh, so, uh, the reason why we have this this is not the first round. We're going to have more of this kind of session, hopefully, later on. Uh, to talk about geniuses in um, order for us to come and create a good model for KPM later on, but we need to understand uh, what is uh, how is the, what is the character of the genius child, how are they uh, actually behave, and how do they actually pick up on the learning and etc. So uh, I think that could be a good start for us uh, getting to know this genius uh, genius talented uh, child. So they are very creative, though they with the IQ, a super IQ, perhaps um, above 140 uh, as we tested them. Uh, and then they are also super talented because they can actually, they are good and they are very creative. Uh, what I can say and I have observed some of the geniuses child in Malaysia, I have no um, chances of having to communicate with any of the other from other country. I hope so some other time we can have the chances to have a chat with some of the genius child from other country and see how is their view. In fact, last two, three days, I also have a chance to chat with them, 47 of them that we have put in uh, Pendang, one of the schools that just reopened uh, recently on April this year where all these geniuses uh, children under MOE purview uh, started their lesson uh, physically and now they are doing everything online. Uh, okay, so I found that this talk is significant because that is where the world uh, actually uh, and MOE find it worth for discussion. But before that, I, I think it's first better to understand uh, this uh, children. So I hope team from USIM can help me more to understand the children. How do they behave? How do you find they are, they are different than others? Because we all know that they are with a super great number, uh, rank of uh, 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 IQ intelligence. 
perhaps Dr. Yati, you can share your experience in USIM. How do you find this child actually? Because I only have three weeks experience with them and not physically only a day with them. And I had to, I have a chance to talk with them, but not in VAS. Perhaps you you have a lot and experience and longer than maybe two, three years already. Can you can you share? What, what, how is this child looks? I mean, behave at all? Oh, OK. Uh, thank you very much, Wanazina, for this opportunity. Actually, I am very privileged to have the opportunity to be with these children for the past almost two years. Um, uh, perhaps Mr. Zol can later uh, also add on his experience with these children. Now, uh, as we know, the gifted program in Malaysia it starts with the IQ test, uh, which they can take from the age of eight uh, through UKM1. Uh, so that is an, a test that they did online. So I think at uh, one of the at the peak of uh, UKM1, more than eight. 100,000 students all over Malaysia took part in that test. So it's quite uh, rigorous in the sense that, you know, after UKM1, because it's done online, so these students are shortlisted and then they take UKM2, which is a face-to-face -face, uh, test, right? So after this rigorous screening, then we have the cream of the crops. You just imagine starting from the age of eight, where you have identified these students as having a very high cognitive level. All right. So that's why we invite them to come to camps. Uh, so I think uh, in the beginning, children as early as eight, nine years old, they come to the annual camp that we have in USEM and also in uh, UKM. UKM for Permata Pintar and then uh, USEM for children who have also the religious inclination. Because we know, uh, based on our national education philosophy, when we talk about uh, a very high cognitive level, we are talking about a very holistic person. And a holistic person will consist of various components which are spiritual, emotional and physical. So if we have someone with a very high IQ, with a very high cognitive level, we need to be able to support them spiritually. We need to support them men, uh, physically and also emotionally because um, when they come to our campus, they are in their teenage years and we know how teenagers are like. Even those normal teenagers, they have this teenage angst. You know, they have, um, you know, this emotion boiling inside them. You know, they are growing up. A lot of our students, they reach puberty in our college. So you just imagine with students of very high IQ, their body is trying to adapt to catch up with their cognitive level. So these are the aspects that we really emphasize. Okay, when they come to camps, we not only cater, we not only do activities to, uh, to cater to their cognitive level, but also their emotional, spiritual, and physical. That's why in Genius Insan, we wholeheartedly believe in the national education philosophy where we need to develop these children holistically. So I always emphasize to the lecturers in Genius Insight. What we need to do is, yes, we provide them with the input for their high cognitive level, which is amazing. They ask questions out of this world. You know, we invite speakers from outside to come to our college, you know, to talk to these children. We have meet the expert session, okay, with uh, industry players. And the questions that they ask to this, uh, you know, to these experts are like questions which I myself did not think about. Um, I remember there's one uh, question recently where our vice chancellor, you know, talk about because our vice chancellor uh, is a physicist, uh, majoring in physics. Uh, he was talking about quantum uh, theories and so on. And our form two students ask questions like, 
you know, something that is beyond our understanding as normal people. I would consider myself normal because <laughs> I'm a product of uh, daily so I even from SBP. Okay, so uh, I'm quite amazed I'm put as the director of Insan because my IQ is significantly lower than the children. Of course, I will never admit it to them. Okay, but this is what is amazing about these children is that you know, they are wise beyond their years. You know, the way they think. So you see it wise, yeah? You see they are wise. They are, they are, to a certain extent. But we need to understand also that they are teenagers. Now, as teenagers, they have this, you know, uh, we know how teenagers behave. You know, they have their own tantrums. You know, sometimes they, they if they don't feel like doing it, they don't. You know, and we have students, uh, you know, hiding in the closet because they want privacy. Uh, we have students walking around the campus, you know, alone just to, to find uh, something, uh, to find, find peace and so on. We have all this in our college. So our lecturers, uh, you know, I, I salute them for having the patience of an angel to cater to these different needs. Even in the classroom, we have about 20 to 25 students per classroom, okay? Differentiated learning, differentiated tasks, differentiated activities is carried out. Because even among students with high IQ, there are those with significantly higher, there are quite a number which is lower. And cognitive level does not necessarily mean that they have the psychomotor skills to adapt to their cognitive level. Uh, they doesn't mean that, you know, they know how to behave among adults because they are still children at heart. They know how to behave. They know they, 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 they Sometimes they don't know how to behave. You know, we still need to remind them to tie their shoelace, okay? Have you taken your shower? Do you use soap when you shower? Yes, I asked that to my children, especially the Form 1, Form 2 student. Dah mandi belum? Amai sini, buciom sikit, wangi ke tidak? You know, I have to do that because they need the, the mother figure, the father figure in the organisation. So we need to understand that although these students have a very high IQ, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, we still need to support them because they are children, they are teenagers, okay? So they have their own problem. Yes, the girls have crushes, you know, uh, they still learn how to uh, have boyfriend, girlfriend, and so on. That's why we have a clinical psychologist uh, as one of our staff. This is very important because uh, we need to understand that when you are, your cognitive level is very high, you are not only competing uh, with your peers, but you are competing within yourself. You know, you keep feeling that, oh, I can do better, I can do better than this. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? You know, so these are all the turmoil that is going on in the children. But what is very, very special about uh, the students or the genius students in college in Sun is that they have a very strong spiritual support because these people, uh, they memorize the Quran. Mm -hmm. uh, not only memorizing the Quran, but also they are able to analyze the Quran from the scientific perspective. Uh, that is where the university lecturers come in. Uh, our students are all taught by the university lecturers. Uh, Dr. Raihan uh, is amazing with physics. Uh, Dr. Liana is a fast track student in chemistry. She earned her PhD at the age of 26. You know, when Puan Azlina is busy making her family, uh, Dr. Liana has already earned her PhD. So, these are all the experts that I we have. have the PhD, uh, Dr. Yati. Instead of the PhD, uh, other kind of PhD. <laughs> right. All right. So this is the kind of support that we need. Uh, so these students, at least they have this kind of fulfillment. So our students in Genius Insan, they not only compete with the students from other schools, but also with the university students. What they makes take them unique, Dr. Yati? Dr. Yati, can I know what makes them unique to your perspective? Okay, one thing is because the cognitive level is very high. 
130. I mean, normal people's IQ is 80 to 100. Okay, but these children, their IQ level is 130. So when you have an IQ of 130, your questioning strategies will be different when you are faced with these students. You know, the way they question how the world works. You know, a student asked me once, uh, okay, a man has landed on the moon in 1969. This is the year 2000. Why, why don't we have a colony of people living on the moon? Mm. Uh -huh. Right? Which, of course, I cannot under, and I cannot answer that question. You know, uh, so, you know, these are the kind of things that our children think about. They think about what will happen in the future. Uh, if I were in Syria at this moment, how would I help the Syrians get water? Because they heard from, uh, you know, from the talks that we have, you know, the Palestinians, the Syrians, they are suffering and so on. Okay, how do I help them get water? So, at yes, least... Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, Sila. Yeah, this is Sharifah here. Uh, uh, and also, you know, uh, when Dr. Yati was going through all this, it really sounds like my household. I have only five kids. And it sounds like whatever, you know, whatever that you're saying, it's like what's happening in my household. Of course, I don't get my children uh, tested for IQ and things like that. But these are the kind of things that, um, you know, like it's, it's one of my passion to actually um, make people aware that this kind of environment needs to be the other kind dalam and what you're providing is what we would like for all keluarga to have because you know i i, I had one statement here um in my mother because i don't know how to prepare for this so i actually had one statement here says how do you know they are geniuses and they are not clever the reason why i asked this is uh, when I, I was talking uh, with my children and my husband uh, at home Macam mana nak? How do I prepare for this? How, what do I do? And uh, my, my husband says, why don't uh, you tanya our geniuses kat rumah ni? This is kat rumah ni. I've, I've got uh, clever uh, uh, children lah. So I said, uh, I, I think, uh, I, uh, to me, my idea of geniuses is different compared to clever. It can be clever, very clever, and you still ask all these questions and there is geniuses. So there is a difference to me in clever and geniuses. So itulah, I think that was the question that I wanted to ask. How do you differentiate geniuses when we, in my in my opinion, kita belum sampai tahap to identify the clever in Malaysia. Uh, itu yang I think I would challenge that. Ini breakfast talk kan? So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I agree with Puan Sharifah, but I would like to know, uh, Puan Karina, uh, how do you see in, in, in the parent purview of this gifted child? Maybe Puan Karina from the Associate of Gifted Children could share? Um, wow, so much. <laughs> Such a wide scope of question. Uh, question yeah, yeah, we broad. want to understand the children first because before we move, because it's important for us to understand that. I only have the experience of three weeks, Puan Karina. Okay. <laughs> I'm mm. sorry, my video is playing up a bit, so I might switch off my video. Um, anyway, uh, there's a very clear and uh, well documented. There's a lot of research and a lot of expertise on gifted childhood uh, identification of gifted children, and it needs to. It, it can start as early as early childhood, and at that time, we don't depend on IQ scores. Mm. We don't do testing for us. We don't do testing for children less than six years old, right? Mm. So, so but before six, there are so many clear indicators of recognizing or uh, identifying a potential giftedness among children. Sorry, I'm still used to using giftedness. We don't use genius so much. Um, so and and again in the Karina, why do don't you do testing before six? Um, because it won't be able to pick up accurately. How do you, uh, you know their own ability to answer question is very separate to their um, cognitive potential, right? Uh, especially you can actually pick up some for some children. Um, uh, you can very clearly see, especially once you've seen a lot of them already, and you are uh, you know I'm mixing around with all the other parents and know the children so well. Um, you know, at age two and three, some of them are very clearly gifted already. 
Oh. So there are a lot of telltale signs. And what we need is to educate parents in terms of recognizing or making a resource or avenue where parents can go to to understand more. Because at this time, at this age between two to six, teachers are not in the picture yet. Ministry of Education is not in the picture yet. It's yeah. parenting, so which is where we come in, in a way. But it's not hard science. It's a lot of, uh, you know, parenting discussions and network. And But there's, there's so much uh, resources out there from the International National Association for Gifted Children. Um, so, um, uh, so what do you want me to answer? How to identify them or yeah, what the uh, what, what is important is as they are very unique as we always uh, look into uh, in terms of their behavior and how they are thinking what are the okay as, as early as below six how do I identify that could help us more and after that how do we see the progress of them in terms of their behavior and how is actually as a parent they could be handling this child and nurture them uh, nurture them and so on okay. yeah. Okay, I'll try. Perhaps I'll go through a bit somewhat chronological. So initially, it will be a lot of parenting perspective and early identification and the early signs. Um, a lot of what Dr. Hayati mentioned earlier is already evident even at that age. And a lot of the gifted children, before their motor skills are developed, the typical childhood development speech, motor skills, they are trying to show you that their cognitive skills is already advanced. Mm. So um, my own, um, just my own experience, I have a child who can uh, do signing of words recognition from flashcards before the, uh, 12 months. So wow. he could read before he was, he could recognize words, he could identify countries on the map before he could speak. So if we are only using the usual benchmark of childhood development, we might miss a lot of that. Mm. So, so, so there are, so so that's a whole uh, lecture of its own, how to identify giftedness among children uh, at a younger age. But one typical parenting um, tidbit or you know, rule of thumb is that when you keep constantly being asked as a parent, how old is he or how old is she? Where people cannot figure out the age of your child because he looks like a baby, but he's doing things that's not a baby. Mm -hmm. I see. So that's always like a trigger when you keep getting that kind of question where people are, and especially when you are, when it's the first child or an only child, you don't have a basis of comparison between your child and another child, um, other children. But when outsiders meet your child and they say, this is not normal, then you get that trigger. So, I mean, that's how, that's how we found out anyway. So there's a lot of uh, signs, but um, what, um, again, what Dr. Hayati mentioned, which is very important, is uh, there's a terminology in it. It's called asynchronous development. It's so important, especially for parents and teachers to know that giftedness, there are all sorts of type of giftedness. There are different domains of where they are gifted. Some are very subject matter specific. There are children who are maths oriented or science, or some are just linguistic. They are just mm. good communicators. They love words. They love talking, conversations. Maths are eh, typical, you know, not so great. So they are not genius in everything. Mm -mm. Some of them, there are some who are that level, but there are some who are very subject matter specialists in a way at a very young age. So you see that happening as well. What's but the challenge, Karina? Mm, so the, the challenge is not so much in the education side. It's actually when the asynchrony is between education and cognitive ability versus a few other things. So if you imagine the slider board, like sound mixer, where it, you know, slider goes up and down, where the in normal child development, they progress gradually, right? Everything cool. goes up. For asynchronous gifted children, one part will shoot up far above everyone else, the cognitive or the, intel, uh, the IQ. But with other things, some are actually behind schedule. Mm. So you get a very extremely uh, gifted uh, um, uh, intellectual child, but motor skills, this is where you get the stereotype, the uh, absent-minded professors or the uh, school schoolyard uh, cluts, kind of the nerds. Kind of yeah. pasang, like you said, lah, nak, nak ikat your own shoelaces, you can't okay. even tie your own shoelaces, but you can talk about um, the end of the world or, you know, um, yeah, I have a child who was talking about subduction at the age of five. Do you know what subduction is? It's um, <laughs> it's ge geography, okay? okay? So, you know, but but um, who hates the playground because there's just too much stimulation mm. going on. So that's another thing. Uh, they, they are also hypersensitive. 
So the best analogy as a parent that some uh, another parent gave me was that um, imagine a very sensitive microphone. You speak to it, your voice gets transmitted really well. Everyone can hear you. You are accelerated, can you're amplified. It's, it. it's not the content of what you are saying, but the the sound of what you are saying is actually no, no, amplified. No, no, no. I'm not about content. no, it's definitely content. I'm just it's an analogy. So the microphone is so sensitive, it can amplify you, you know, uh, um, multiple times, but at the same time, it's also picking up all these other noises where you get that noise, the, the being it sound. So this kind of children also have this as a challenge. They are oversensitive. Their senses are hyperactive. So a lot of our kids at the younger age, they can't stand loud noises. They can't stand crowd. So, you, so um, uh, yeah, so I have a child who love um, astronomy who loved the planetarium but I had a massive meltdown because the uh, uh, PA system was too loud making the announcement that the movie is about to start so we had to leave so he can't stand so a I have a lot of friends and members of our society whose children go around wearing earphones uh, headphones they go to the movie they want to watch a movie but it's to control the volume so these are a lot of things that are uh, that we uh, what you call it, enc encounter at a young age. And over time, parents are the one to help the children manage this. So by the time you teachers see them in the school, they've already learned how to manage themselves. But we had to deal with the issue earlier on. But mm. some of them will still, the thing is some of them will still carry this to the school level, which takes me to the next chronology um, phase, which I think would be important to communicate with educators, is that um, talking about boarding school setup and permata uh, genies and instant, I believe you all take them at a slightly older age when they are ready to leave the home, right? I think mm -hmm. 12 or 13, there is a massive gap in education for these children between primary years, between 7 to 12. And that's where our pro problem is as parents. Because up till the age of 6, we become experts in giftedness. We, the members of my society, they know more than so many experts about giftedness out of necessity because they have to manage their own child. Yes. But we get a lot of dropouts by the time parents, the children reach the age of six because their question to us in, as a society is, where do I put them to school? They don't fit in anywhere. No. They're just that, mm. right? No. Standard one in the Malaysian education system, children are expected to sit in a class of 30, 40 people, mm -hmm. very loud, sit and listen to the teacher teach ABC when they are already learning subduction and geography and yes. astronomy. Yeah. And they are expected to sit still for how many hours? They are either <laughs> exactly. problematic, they react by becoming problematic students, mm. or if the teachers do not recognize them, the mm. teachers blame them as problematic students. Yeah, they're always recognized as problematic in public school. Yes, that yeah. has come to our surprise, uh, Karina. Yes. Uh, how do you find the child uh, adopt and adapt to the socializing uh, aspect when as they grow up? Some can, not all can. Some with a lot of work by the parents and those lucky ones who do, does have teacher support or psychologist support, some will be able to adapt and I've seen many who do. And it also somewhat ties into their level of giftedness. So a lot of the extreme ones have harder time to adapt. Mm -hmm. Because they are, they are, we, I call it quirks. Like. They have a lot of quirks and the general society are not as welcoming. It's harder for them to fix and they can't change themselves as easily. So um, in the home environment, in their own bubble, it's safe. Mm -hmm. Can Everyone understands them already, but to fit into the real world, it's a bit more challenging, but not everyone. Some can adapt and by the time they are 12 and 13, they are fine. They look great, they are happy and all. Um, although there are some, and it depends also on the parenting uh, style. Um, mm. There's this problem, another problem on the flip side is called dumbing down. Oh. Where in order to adapt, in order to not mm. be the weird kid in class, they say, okay lah, no need to pandai-pandai, I learn lah, abata, whatever. <laughs> right? Yeah, she I like, saw that movie. Like everyone else. Yeah, yeah, you saw that, that, that movie, The Genius Story? Yes. That, He's played down yes. with the teachers because uh, yes. the teachers come to surprise. Uh, 
the teacher does not believe that uh, her capability. So that's quite interesting. The dumbing down is is actually a character that they need, they need to act. And one, for parents, one, it's, it's a heartache for us. On yeah. one hand, we want them to have friends. We understand why. We want them to not be the weird kid in school. But on the other hand, we know their potential. And sometimes it breaks our heart to see, oh, you could do so much more. But that's all you. And then the thing is with child psychology, the more they do it, it becomes part of them. They actually forgot of their own potential. Exactly. So they become I mediocre. So oh, not is this, all is this a children gets all the A's or excel. Because, yeah. I, I have, um, I, I don't have, I mean, I'm really impressed with Juan Karina just now. I mean, I, 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 I tabate you because you actually provide that kind of support even preschool. Now, I have a child that, uh, my, my third child that actually uh, reads encyclopedia at nights and things like that. So, dia punya development is exactly what you say where dia macam tak sangat social. Kita orang panggil dia social, socially in, uh, inept. Dia actually say himself, I'm socially inept. I, I'm, I was so sedih bila dia cakap because he repeating what I said. No, but it was not meant to down him, but just to make him understand so that he can cope with it. But at school, Master just standard four or five macam tu. He went to school and um, uh, the when during uh, Hari Guru, the teacher, the maths teacher, and he this this guy, memang very clever lah. This guy said, my my son ni uh, problematic. Why problematic? Sebab bila cikgu ajar, dia tak tengok muka. So I said to him, cikgu, cikgu pernah tak tanya balik dia soalan after cikgu cakap because my son ni has a habit of dia, dia tak tengok muka je tapi dia dengar apa yang happening and dia, dia know what you, have, you you remember what you says. Cikgu pernah tak tanya uh, uh, dia after you give a, a class, you tanya dia apa yang cikgu cakap. I can bet with you and I can, I'm willing to bet with you money that he can repeat word for word apa yang you kata. So this is the problem of growing up with the, the school masalah one of the things that from a workplace perspective to actually have people workforce of the future that have adaptability flexibility uh, wants to ask curiosity technology analytical we need to start from preschool the preschool preschool primary we must encourage chick uh, budak budak to ask the question i have another child who's very hyperactive dia tak pandai sangat now i have five children all different different backgrounds and i have to deal with them and give the support differently and this this particular child dia uh, sangat aktif dia tak suka membaca in fact sampai form 3 dia tak suka membaca you know i nak mengajar dia macam mana nak membaca tapi after form 4 they managed to pick up and now she's reading like nobody's business now and she's doing very well but you know, she was actually uh, 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 pretty deaf as a problematic child because she asked questions and I said why why are we not uh, encouraging people to ask questions check go school I would say I've got no I don't have time for you to ask questions uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. you keep quiet uh, you know uh, you just keep quiet you know you just be good and and I can tell you master standard six my my son hari tu dia dapat uh, jawapan uh, UPSR eh uh, soalan latihan lah latihan to be mm. uh, not latihan to be yeah. soalan akhir tahun and he got very marked down and he never gets marked down. He never gets less than, you know, 90 plus and things like that. Kenapa? Mm -hmm. Is why is this marked down? And he said, ah, tak apa, tak apa, dah, it's okay. Cikgu nak kita jawab sebijik-sebijik macam dalam buku. And this, you know, this, and he explained to me, this is actually the, the concept of this is this, 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 this. But, you know, I'm just explaining this way. But cikgu kata macam ni, ah, tak apalah, you know, it's okay. I'll follow the book. I'll follow the cikgu punya uh, skema jawapan. Mm -hmm. And exactly Puan Karina punya point, they become mm -hmm. that. Unfortunately, it doesn't enhance their ability to do more and to be more. But that's the schooling system that we have at the moment. Yeah, I think I think Puan Karina uh, uh, identify as gifted children actually can lead to unrealistic expectation from the from 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 public, right? So that that could actually uh, make these children under stress and everything probably i don't know i don't know i have no idea because i i have not had a chance to uh being around and surrounded by this gifted i don't know whether they are gifted or not also and by learning by learning from your way of uh, identifying the children is very very special because under six years we do have under our uh, permata before Permata Negara, Permata Negara is under Rosma Manso a uh, long time ago. And I think this program is still uh, under, under MOE. 
And I don't know how much helpful is that program because it's not under MOE uh, currently. Uh, or it is. Oh. Uh, I think uh, what Puan Azlina is referring to perhaps is Permata Kurnia. Permata uh, Negara, Permata Negara, below six. Negara is uh, below six, yes, that's right. But what uh, Karina mentioned just now, uh, I reflected back on the autism program in Malaysia. So yes. what, what you mentioned about um, gifted children is uh, if we go back 20 years ago, that is what happened to the autis autism uh, programs in Malaysia, you know, where parents, you have to depend on parents to educate their autistic children. So when we talk about gifted children, we need to understand that there's a whole spectrum of giftedness, right? We have uh, child prodigies, we have uh, children who are purely gifted in one aspect of creativity. For example, uh, perhaps this child can play the piano at a very young age, you know, uh, and so on. But what we have under the Ministry of Education right now, which the ministry caters, is only for this specific group of people who have been identified as having a significantly higher cognitive level. That's all. What Karina said about, you know, identifying child prodigies, gifted children, I don't think we have that in our, under the purview of the Ministry of Education. And if you look back 20 years ago, um, autistic programs are like that, you know. Uh, even schools do not cater to autistic children. Uh, parents have to cater it on their own. So when we talk about this huge spectrum of giftedness and talented children, yes, I do admit that I think under the current uh, education system, we don't uh, really cater towards the one we have identified as child prodigies. Uh, and you are right, Karina, uh, you hit the nail on the head when you said it depends on the parents. So it depends on the education of the parents themselves on how to cater to the needs of these children. And uh, when you talk about dumbing down, uh, yeah, uh, recently we have this hoo-ha about women had to dumb down a bit. From <laughs> 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 a professor, no? Uh, okay. I think it's the same thing because okay. uh, it is very sad that our gifted children yeah, need right, compromise, right. you know. Uh, at one end of the spectrum, they have a very uh, talented, you know, they have this very talented person, but because we need to adapt socially in our society, we need to dumb it down. However, I am uh, hoping that, you know, one day uh, our ministry will not, maybe not Ministry of Education, but other ministries will have a very special program for our truly gifted and talented children. Dr. Aya, you have anything to say, Dr. Aya, about what is World Bank see and how is actually World Bank have do some studies on about the genesis? Yeah, this is very, very interesting uh, conversation and topic. And um I would I would start kind of um I, I also want to talk about gifted seed children and kind of uh, see the broader picture on this. And when we talk about gifted children and youth, we, I totally agree that it is such a variety of different gifts that you have. You may have very high academic uh, talent on some subject or several subjects, but then there are other issues also that, um, that you, you could have a good in projects or you could have very clever social skills or you are very good in innovative or you have language skills or cooperation skills or artistic skills and so on. So what is important here is that all types of skills that our children have, they would be able to develop those skills. So we couldn't, we shouldn't uh, kind of in very young age to label children that you are good in this and you are good in that and only develop that specific skill. But we should give them um, possibility to do variety of skills because m many children, they they start being good in one thing and then they, they when they grow up, then they change and it may change that that 
skill that they originally had when they were very tiny and small, that wasn't probably the one that they ended up to be the best ability or their best skill. And then um, you can have a very small uh, skill set on something, but then you need to also know how, how you can combine all the knowledge that you have, how you use that information. When we work, for example, when these um, uh, children go to working life, if they don't know how to use those skills, it is it is very, very, very pity and very uh, in many cases, very gifted, talented children have a social issues because they do not know how to relate with other people or how to communicate or they don't know what to do with their skill. And um, we need to support as adults their social skills and their emotional well-being because it may be overwhelming for a child to when they understand that they are different from each from other children because they know more or can do more so they it can be very very stressful in their lives and that mm -hmm. is the place mm -hmm. where we, they need support mm. and uh, i i is that I, so, they are actually stressful i didn't know they are stressful karina they found it stressful absolutely absolutely uh, for various reasons one is because their understanding and grasp of the world around them is so acute so intense they understand different connotations you know when you say something with slightly different intonation they pick up on your um, nonverbal skills and 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 uh, the words that you use so they're very very sensitive uh, people so um, they definitely and um, one thing that we haven't talked about when I mean, we talk about dumbing down but another thing a uh, source of stress in a way uh, to simplify it is this uh, tendency not all but the general tendency for them to also be perfectionists so oh. if um, so almost to the point of obsession if I, I'm I'm interested in this I want to do this but I will only do it if it's 100% perfect and if it's not perfect it's a failure and exactly. that comes with a fear for failure so I won't even do it because there is a chance that it will be a failure so, mm -hmm. so that's also another thing where it's, um, so, you know, that this this almost to the level of an obsession to must be to excel at something or to to do it something right. And if they already upfront think that oh this is not going to work, I'm not even going to do it at all because then it will be a, a failure. So, so, so that, that takes a lot of skills from the parents and the teachers to to guide them through that. You, so you have to teach a lot of life skills. So I like that uh, Dr. Aya mentioned about social skills and generally life skills, how to deal with um, uh, failure, how to deal with rejection, how to uh, deal with um, disappointment. Um, all those are, they are very tiny uh, humans in a way, in a bigger body once they, they grow up uh, even. So yes, so um, stress mm -hmm. is uh, definitely a factor to, to consider as well. Back to you, Dr. It can be a burden to a child that they know a lot and they understand something, but they don't understand all and they, they can't make sense of it. And they, they probably cannot meet people who would be able to explain them. So they really, really might get uh, even depressed if, if all this chaos is in their mind and they can't. So we need to uh, try to give structure in their mind's development so they can kind of uh, make a structure of their own ideas in their own heads. But uh, then the very uh, talented children can also get bored easily because they do not have options to use their gifts or talents. So they just get so bored and then they may start misbehaving or dumbing down or trying to please the other peers and kind of not to be the one who is always different from from other this is this is an actual thing so what i really uh, find to be important is that our education system and preschool system included early childhood system could be the type of place where everybody even if they are different from each other and they have different kind of uh, interest and skills and talents so so we could support that so the system would would allow 
uh, people to be different and we could individualize their their kind of um, learning road. And then this individualization can we can have different tools on that. But the basic thing would would be that that everybody is different anyways. Some people are genius, some are, have some other talents and some are kind of a mediocrity, but we are all needed and everybody should be able to develop in that in that same system. And, um, do, do, and in Finland, Dr. Aya, do they have a separate, I mean, uh, uh, schools for this or actually they no. have, they put it all in a pub, same public school? They all go to same public school and <laughs> then the teachers are doing the individualization in the school level. And then also the gifted children can be part of their peers. They have the social network, social connection. They learn how to work with others. The others that are not as clever as, as they are. It's also important skill for them to understand that not everybody is as, as mm -hmm. clever as I am. And I need to be able to explain myself to all kinds of people. And then they are also able to help their peers because it is very powerful um, for a child that they are able to help others. So, and then they may be learning something from, from the ones that they are kind of supporting and teaching. So it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. And um, then we need to think that is, is the uh, IQ the only measurement because the, there is so much going on that we can't measure with with a test like IQ test. It is one, yes, it is very good test and, and academic skills and so on. But if we want to know more about the child then, but that is an issue that I cannot answer yet, but it it, it is very, very interesting question. Why, and, why um, is it, Dr. Aya, why is it Finland find it not, there is not nothing that necessary to split the children this special gift under a certain, a certain treatment compared to the others. Why is it Finland see so? We want them to uh, develop their all levels. So they, it's not only the thing that they are gifted with that they get support with. They need to be supported in everything in their growth. And then when they have the giftness of one or two items, then we support them in the same school system, but just additional learning on those subjects on, and those issues. So, and we don't want to bring the children to a place that some children are uh, say that you are kind of better than the others. We yeah. don't want to have a two uh, tier system that we have the clever kids and not so clever kids. We want the, everybody be in the same level, but they just are different. That is the so, reason. You know, the, 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 the fear of failure is very real and it's actually affecting kita punya students, eh, Azlina, because this is the feedback I have from my own children with their friends and also from the uh, scholar, scholars the, orang yang, uh, the people who give scholarships to the scholars, scholar students uh, overseas. What happened is they go, they are very clever, so they've always performed well. They go into universities like Imperial and suddenly they are not the most cleverest or in Canada or wherever. They're not the most cleverest. And what happens is that they fail. They actually drop out because they cannot cope the fact that they are not the, the number one and they become so stressful. Uh, I, I tell my children, you know, you've got scholarships, you should, uh, itu amanah rakyat, and you should just study. That's all you, you need to do. And they tell me, no, you don't understand. It's not just that. I have friends who are, you know, they just cannot cope because um, they, they they cannot cope with the system and they know, just like what somebody was saying, they know this is the amount of thing they can do and they're not willing to test because they're afraid to fail. And these are the, the scholars that we have, you know, and so it's, it's a pity that we have, have this very clever people that's not supported in terms of emotional and all the other EQs and IQs, that they actually make the decision after being so successful for 18 years to drop out. So it's very scary that this happened and it's not, it's not something that is uh, unique. It's not because this is what I get from my, my children and also I get from uh, a very known scholarship, yang orang nak pergi, uh, inilah, I won't mention who, but uh, the, the people from that, they actually have this this problem and they have to help the, the students like this. If not, then they drop out and that's it. Lah. 
Okay, uh, perhaps we need to combat the elitism among the geniuses. That is a very uh, priority for us. Lah. But we also have, uh, I, I mean, perhaps the others from MOE or PADU could help me and add more. Um, we also have an issue of how to nurture them if we don't have a specific school for these children because it's not easy to leverage everyone comes together as what Dr. Aya have mentioned. I, I, I see your point, Dr. Aya, and no doubt there is. Uh, in some country, they find that uh, they, they benefit from, from having this Genesis schools, uh, specific school for, for this kind of child. And also, what worries more from the parents? I can hear from Puan Sharifa, from Karina, where uh, how to best mold this child so that they won't be fear and do the dumping down or feel boring and etc. So if if the public school could, I, I don't know, I, I'm just throwing an idea, perhaps Padu could add more. Um, if we do this integrated program, is that what happened in, in, in Finland, Dr. Aya? You have integrated programs or it's actually, it's a public school, it's not a private school, it's a public school, but the public school itself is molded as we need to cater all categories of children uh, uh, via from the low end to the higher end. Exactly, so it's very, very integrated and inclusive school system. All public schools and this means that the, the st students who need support, the special education students, they are there in the same school. And then the very gifted children, they are also in the same school. So they are all included, integrated to the same schooling system and same schools. But then we just adjust the teaching and learning within on the school level, because in some cases, some child might be very good in something. So then they can move faster, but then they should uh, need more support on something else. So then then, okay, then get, they can get some uh, more uh, on the roots type of, of How does Finland give support? How does Finland give more support to the gifted one? I mean, do you have a screening to identify who is the most gifted among in one classroom no. perhaps? No, no, we just look, we just compare them. Well, we have criteria on the curriculum, uh, the level of learning, and we uh, compare the knowledge of the child uh, to the curricular level. And then you can see that if the child knows a lot more than you are required to have the top grade on the curricula, then there is a gifted <laughs> child in, in our hands. And then they start to uh, give them, them a more, um, challenging tasks so they are not doing the same thing that everybody else in this in their age level on that topic but they take the uh, more mature and advanced children task or they ask them to do projects or give presentations or build a model of something so they are doing more than other children or different from other children and the teachers are kind of uh, giving individual tasks according to the level of the child's knowledge so they wouldn't get bored because if they need to do very gifted child needs to do something very basic level stuff that everybody else is doing they get so bored so they are given more challenging tasks Dr. Aya, how do how you deal with the problem that if you've, you've got this curricula and you say one person is able to answer more and that's deemed as gifted, but the product of a student is the product of the family. And if the family is a nurturing type of family, they will actually produce children that may not be sort of that, that kind of gifted, but you know, cleverer than the rest. And, and once they reach to a certain level, suddenly they realize that they're not that gifted. How, how do you cope with that? Do you, have you had that kind of situation where one person at a younger age may be deemed as gifted and suddenly at a certain age they become normal? Yes, it happens because so happens children de develop in different uh, times. Some, some children develop early and some later and then some children get, get, get up the other ones. So, so they are like a late bloomers. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that if you are very clever in a, in a young age, you would be clever as a teenager or or different from others or more wiser or more more gifted so it, it goes in different phases so yeah right studies also have actually uh, said like uh, among all the gifted ones uh, who iq is 130 and above 
as they grown up above 18 years old, so the IQ could go, I mean, uh, getting slower than when they are at the younger, much younger age. I don't know how true is that. Maybe Karina, you have an experience with the children and your own children. And the others, what happened to the other members of this breakfast talk? I never hear your voice. Uh, where is our Samsul, Afiza, and uh, the rest from uh, who else? I feel, I mean, uh, yeah, Rauda. So yeah, least, I'm still here. I'm still here. Uh, actually, um, it's a very interesting discussion, especially when, when talking about. Uh, uh, nurturing these uh, gifted kids. I, I don't have any like uh, opinions on it because I don't have kids myself and I'm not sure if I'm gifted at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, but I have a question like uh, to avoid these kids from being dumbed down uh, in order to help them adapt to the society, uh, to the um, to the community. Um, Maybe uh, we can hear from both uh, Malaysian experience and Finland experience. Uh, how do you, um, you know, uh, help them uh, in terms of giving them that soft skills? What kind of soft skills or um, social development that they would probably need more than other normal kids? Um, because, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, because one of the things that I, as we at ESM Penraju look at is the nurture and development of uh, youth um, where we equip them with this, uh, the, the needed life skills or soft skills um, in order for them to adapt to society because there are some uh, in our program that are, uh, I wouldn't call them delinquent, but uh, it's like they're slightly naughtier than the others. Lah. Uh, so, uh, and to avoid them getting bored, giving problems to other people. What seem to be problems for other people could be actually just them uh, expressing their border, boredom. So, um, you know, uh, how, what kind of, you know, courses or modules that we can, we can uh, maybe uh, even at MOE level can do uh, at school because Interesting, Marina. I see yeah, because, there. yeah because I, I am sure that other than the 47 kids at Pendang there are more gifted kids that we haven't identified and uh, they might have uh, have not heard about you know high IQ of 140 I'm sure my mother didn't uh, didn't know this when I was uh, six years old reading Merong Maha Bangsa uh, <laughs> you know uh, or from six uh, but I was so interested in reading when I was six. But, you know, uh, I like Dr. Aya said, after uh, growing up, I mean, kids, they, 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 they grow differently. There are some are early bloomers, some are late bloomers. I guess I'm a early bloomers in terms of reading. So uh, <laughs> now I don't read anymore. I just watch YouTube. Uh, so, you know, that what kind of uh, help that they would probably need? Uh, maybe it's something that we can actually help uh, MOE, you know, uh, to identify, maybe uh, train the counsellors, because we have counsellors in school, uh, or maybe even the teachers, uh, uh, what kind of skills that the teachers may need to help identify these kids and help to, you know, nurture these kids uh, even more, uh, especially the gifted ones, uh, and especially those that don't realise that they're gifted. So, uh, I mean, in the future, we may need the, them as the thinkers, uh, the, th the think tank of Malaysia, um, you know, uh, so that's why, I think that's why probably, I, I think I think that's the reason that we're here. It's not just to enhance the, uh, the gifts in terms of uh, academics or, uh, you know, uh, special talents, whatever, but it's, uh, I think it's more to help nurture them uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. One, Marina. Uh, okay. Perhaps maybe I can throw this first to uh, Dr. Aya. How do you see that? What 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 are the uh, best module? Does it have any specific module on um, loosen the stressness or the soft skill that in that needs among when we identify the child as super intelligent or have this what we call as mental giant uh, mm. <laughs> among them so yeah can you yeah yeah first of all um it would be 
good that we didn't ask about pay much attention to that. So we wouldn't say every day that you are so clever and you are so genius and you we have a lot of expect expectations on so you no levels at so, yes but just kind of give opportunities so we as adults understand that this is a gifted child but we we kind of don't label and give pressure on the child just give opportunities to grow and that those opportunities can be done differently first of all it can be done by changing the pedagogy in the classrooms so the way that teachers are teaching and children are learning are very versatile and we use different um, 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 uh, pedagogies and working uh, materials and, and um, different types. Type. And then another possibility is that in the curriculum or offer opportunities to choose uh, subjects like a free willing choosing like extra math or extra art classes or whatever is kind of their specific field and then they are teaching that kind of um, um, so everybody need to choose something in school so it's not that the clever children need to study more than the others but the part of the schooling could be uh, uh, they could be able to choose where they are focusing on. So then they could focus on the issues that they they really are interested but in. But deeper to that, Dr. Aya, if they are they are if they are not learning more than the others, so how can we challenge them? Because we know that they are easily to bore them. So what are the way of we can challenge them if they are not enhanced in terms of what they are learning? Oh, yeah, if they are if no, they are no. in the same classroom than the others, um, then it's the, about the individualization, and it is a difficult job for a teacher. But then there could be some kind of support um, that there could be another people coming to the classroom and supporting the teacher, so they could kind of guide the students on different level, even if they are in the same same classroom. So if, for example, if we if we are learning about the about the Finnish history, for example, then the basic thing that everybody does is learn the basics on the Finnish history. But if there is some child that is has very advanced and gifted in Finnish history, then um, that child could make a research on Finnish history. So not study the basic because they all already know that, but then that child could be studying and making his or her own research in the classroom while the others are doing the basic study of the same, the same history. Okay. Uh, then understand. there can be extra, extracurricular activities okay. also. Those are also very helpful in, in the structure that extracurricular things uh, can be added. Well, what what example of extracurricular that you have in mind, Dr. Aya? Like, Music? Like clubs, 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 yeah, kind of morning uh, before school clubs or after school clubs or, in, or even in between the um, classes, there could be some, uh, some, some. But that is also what we have in the normal classes, also with the, the other child, right? So. Yeah. So do we need to have some kind of a different approach for extracurricular for these special kids? Yeah, it could be more advanced. So it would like? be kind of a, a, a space rocket, <laughs> a yeah. space rocket extracurriculum where they could uh, figure out why the people are not living in the moon. <laughs> All right, right. Dr. Yati, you want to say? Yeah. yeah, just to echo on what Dr. Aya said just now, when we have a different set of students, we need a different set of intervention for them, which is very specialized towards their talents. So what we did in INSAN, what we are doing in INSAN is that we provide the opportunity for these children to explore their potential. So which is why we practice not only differentiated learning, but also differentiated activities and differentiated tasks for them. OK, because we know that, you know, among the children that we have in Genius Insight, we also need to consider the background of the parents' uh, socioeconomic status. Uh, for some privileged students, you know, they come from the T20 group, 
where the parents are more aware towards their children's talent. We also have students from the B40 group or the underprivileged kids. You know, we have uh, children whose uh, parents who has like uh, eight siblings. I mean, he is the only one who is of a higher cognitive level. He may not realize his true potential and he may have uh, the disability even to uh, interact uh, freely with the, the other students in the same college, in the same cognitive level group because of his underprivileged uh, family background. You know, so these are the things that we need to cater. That's why it is very important that we know the profile of each and every student. We know what we need to, in this child's case, for example, we need to provide him with more opportunities for him to enhance his level of confidence enhance his speaking skills, for example. So that's why it is very important for us to identify the talent of each and profiling of each individual children, a child, so that we are able to give a targeted intervention for them. And that is what we are doing in Genius Insight. I would love to invite all of you to come over and meet our children personally, uh, you know, uh, interact with them and see what we have provided them. That's why the nurturing environment is very important for these children. Uh, in Insan, they are very lucky because they can use all the facilities in the university. They are free to uh, attend programs together with the professors. Uh, they take part in competitions with the undergraduate students, which really challenge them okay, because they have that cognitive level. So I, I would like to take leave now because I have a class to attend. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Puan Azlina, uh, for this. Thank you, thank, thank, you thank you. Thank you for being with us. Yes. Do, do so join much. us again. Later. Yeah, inshallah, thank you so much. Uh, it is. It has been an honor to meet uh, Dr. Aya, Karina, Marina, and Sharifa Zaida also, and all the others. Uh, to my ex colleagues in Padu, it's so nice to meet you again. Uh, Turaya is also on the line, I see. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my team is still inside this uh, group. Uh, we have Dr. Liana, Dr. Raihan. So if you have any questions, please do ask. Uh, Cik Zul Khanin has been with the program since 2014. He is a walking encyclopedia where Insan is concerned. Okay, so thank you so much. Assalamualaikum and good morning or rather good good night, <laughs> where you are. Okay, bye. All right. Uh, continuing from what Dr. Yati have said, Karina, what, what about the parents for underprivileged? I know, I know that your association has actually a number of parents with this kind of child. So <coughs> What, what helps the underprivileged child? Of course, obviously, these people don't have the knowledge as you have to identify the child. Have you had that kind of parents in your society, association? Limited. So that is definitely a limitation. So we are extremely privileged by our own circumstances and by the fact that we are aware enough to know that there is a society or there's such a thing. So when you talk about underprivileged, not even recognizing that this is a thing in the first place. Um, so I used to give this example of, uh, you know, there's different levels of giftedness, different types and talents is when your gift is something that can be um, showcased as a, as a tangible output. So uh, uh, arts and, and music is one of those where we call children talented. So you mm -hmm. can have children who has that innate ability for musical talent, but live in a fishing village somewhere who has never had access yes. to a piano or yeah. anything. Yeah. And you yeah. wouldn't know, that's right? Yeah. So that's definitely where teachers and the education system come in. For those who are privileged, yes, the parents come in early. But for others, that's where teachers and the education system can support, where in the school, so I believe there's a strong need to, you don't need all teachers to be expert in gifted education, but at the very least, in their early teacher training, let them know that there is such a thing as gifted children. And these are some obvious signs for them to identify and and not diagnose. We don't want teachers to be the ones diagnosing our children and especially misdiagnosing. We have a lot of parents complaining, teachers calling my child ADHD la, or autistic because they don't want to sit still in class. Right. So we don't want teachers to diagnose, but we want teachers to have at least some baseline ability to identify potential giftedness 
And then where education system can come in to support more is to have more education psychologists, I believe, who are maybe at a higher level that teachers can refer the students to. Here we identify a student in my class that's somewhat different from other children. I think there's some different level of cognitive ability. I don't know, but can you help me assess this student? to have that mechanism within the education system and to have more trained education psychologists. And it's not, education psychologists can cover a wider range of things, not just giftedness, you know, uh, special needs, special abilities as well. So for Malaysia to have a stronger system of education psychology, I would love to see that happen. And this is where our uh, Pejabat Pendidikan Daerah, the district education office can come in, where you have more access to children in the rural, uh, harder to reach population. So that's where uh, our strong advocacy is for, for the education system. Oh, that is we great. All we all, as an organization, we are limited to our own network. We are in the Klang Valley. Uh, one, once in a while, we get anomaly cases. Uh, we had last, you know, before COVID, we had a case from Ipoh where uh, a temple called us and they said they had been raising this orphan child, not an orphan actually, this child was abandoned by his mother. At the, at, the, at the temple and they raised him and he has been so-called quotation mark um, problem child. They've been, he's been kicked out of five different schools and because he hates the teachers, he plays up, but he loves the library. Every school that he goes to, he will sit in the library. He doesn't speak Malay, so, um, so it's a Chinese boy. Um, so, uh, and he would spend his time in the library. And the only time he seemed to connect with the education is when a teacher gels with him on a personal level. I when see. he likes that teacher, and then they realize he's actually so capable. It's only because he's very particular, very fussy. So, and these are monks who were raising him. So they didn't know what to do. So that's when they reached out to us purely because we had somebody who happened to to be in the same district. But we, our own reach as a civil, we are very, very small, and we are all working mothers. <laughs> so our reach is very, very limited. But that's why we love to have better engagement or enhanced engagement with the education system. Yeah. Um, actually, in to early 2019, we did have a dialogue with MOE. With um, at that time, it was YBTO who was yeah. minister. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we had a really good dialogue where we presented our uh, uh, our perspective of gifted children and our recommendation or our wish list for changes in the education system. So I would love to share that with you offline as well. But yes. yeah, so yes. those, those are some of my um, current current that uh, guide is feedback. More. That, could guide. that could guide us more, uh, Karina. And I put note on what you have mentioned that the underprivileged children, we will see what we can do among our district officer just to, I mean, get notifying the children and at least uh, to the very last where you said we we be able to, the teachers will be able to help identify this child and Perhaps, I don't know, in our cases in Malaysia, it's not like Finland, we, we have uh, schools where we actually put uh, them in under category because from the perspective that these students need to be sitting among them so that they can have uh, a, a, a socialization and they can actually vetting with each others compared to where they, they are with others in the mainstream because they are not come comes to their level and i also learned about this gifted child they they le they love to talk with the adults rather than among their peers i don't know how is it true because that is what study also have said and from the materials that i have read they they wanted to talk with the adult just because uh, adults have more knowledge than than what their peers are so this is also uh, another thing that we need to put note and how to develop this model for MOE later on. I mean, down the road, three, two to three years coming uh, uh, in um, in the future to come. So it's a great thing. What about the others? Uh, uh, perhaps uh, Dr. Rauda, you have anything to ask? Hi, Rol. Nadia from Padu uh, and then Yen Yi. Yen Yi, anything further you would like to I mean, uh, ask Pon Karina or anything, Yinyi? Sweetly? Sweetly? Sweetly is here. Hello? Yinyi, I, I, are you here? Yes, Yinyi, yes, please. Uh, this is not an area of my expertise, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, but, but is there anything that boggles your mind that you wanted to know more about the genesis or the programs or anything? 
that you see? Uh, I guess my immediate thought is that I think the maybe the ministry uh, needs to have a um, clear goal of what we want to achieve for these students. Uh, I think that will help to set the directions, you know, whether are we I think I think one is to make sure that we can maximize the potential for every student, as well as I, I guess the country would have um, aspirations in terms of uh, perhaps uh, innovations or uh, other kinds of advances that we want to aim towards. Uh, so I think those would be the key guiding consideration as we are shaping any programs for these students. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that is right also, but uh, to put this, this breakfast talk is to, to put the platform. I don't want to confine everyone what is MOE has currently in the exercise because I want it to be uh, broadened up so the discussion can go anywhere so before we frame it into a new model. So that's why I open it out to everyone to come with the idea. I know that we 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 tend to have, uh, we are combating with the elitism of school where we have that genius school in, in, in Malaysia. That is one part that I have been uh, asked a lot uh, by many uh, educationists and uh, people. Uh, how do we avoid the elitism of having this uh, specific school for geniuses? Because how do we mix and, and how do we encourage the socialization or integrate uh, just like the, 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 the public school? Because uh, public sees that uh, private are doing better than the than the private school is doing better than the pub, uh, the private school in terms of nurturing the, the geniuses. I don't know how true is that. It's subject for us to also check on the data and etc. because we don't have any data so as far. So um, what uh, I would like to move on a bit uh, to everyone. If uh, we wanted to um, have the best kind of school for the gifted, how would that should be? Best kind of school. If you, <laughs> if we can actually imagine one, what is the best kind of school for the gifted that 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 we can mold out? Perhaps, uh, who wants to go first? Please. May, uh, yeah, please, Karina, go ahead. Uh, your mic, your mic is off. Your mic, your mic is not. Okay. All right. Yeah, All right. there's a lag. Sorry, um, I need to go first because I need to log off after this. Um, yeah. My day job is calling me. Um, right. So actually, uh, uh, I just want to say that with schools, I would caution with regards to how we treat the gifted students because giftedness is a trait of who they are, is their characteristic of who they are. And we want to maximize their potential for their well-being, for the children's well-being. And we talk about the UN's uh, Convention for uh, Education Rights, where we maximize every child's potential, right? But, um, but uh, another thing, however, with schooling and the product of education is that we need to caution against seeing them as products and what they produce. And in Malaysia, unfortunately, there's a lot of talk about A's and exam results and too much focus on that. Whereas for gifted children, they are not necessarily A students. I think our teachers need to remember this. A lot of them may not, uh, they are their um, achievements are not in the forms of scoring in exam results. They are thinkers, they are different different levels of giftedness and academics may not be the, the only thing that they are uh, worth of. So I really need to go, everyone's calling me now. Um, okay, my, right. my sincere uh, gratitude for the opportunity and we'll probably catch up more. Yeah, yeah, sure okay. Karina, I will be in touch with you. And don't forget to share the materials that you uh, told me earlier. We do offline enough of that, all right? Okay, bye Karina. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, anyone? I uh, mean, perhaps Tata Aya and the yeah. rest, maybe maybe with your experiences, how, how is the internationally see the best kind of school for these kids? Yeah, well, uh, first um, I would like to um, say that uh, we have discussed a lot that there are children who have uh, some special talents on something, mm -hmm. but uh, at the same time we need to keep in mind that they are children and you young people and they are growing and they are still learning new things. So we should not kind of only focus to the things that they are already good, but mm -hmm. we should also focus to the 
issues that they are not that good yet right. and they need more support mm -hmm. because in order for them to be able to use their skills on something they need to have other skills to support because the working life uh, in the future probably needs a very multi-professional people who have who have a lot of knowledge on different things and who can use the knowledge so uh, Instead of focusing only to the topic of their talent, we should offer them possibilities to develop the, the kind of weaknesses that they might have and even find new um, topics where they are, they, they, they are also great with. Because if they have not tried something, they don't know if they are good in it. So uh, various of options to do different kind of things to try to find the ones that they are really good about so that would be one one aspect that i would like to add i see i see marina i remember when you asked about the soft skill that you can add and support i think yeah. uh, how, how is a yasan penraju supporting on the creativity i mean the soft skill when you talk about the model of the soft skill because i found out these 47 children in pandang they they are more interested on music on the other sides of their 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 their, their mental uh, uh thinking they they are more keen of music and also arts they are they can draw portrait they can they love drawings you know so this your your institution has helped to support on this um actually for uh up to now uh we're more on uh the nurturing and developing skills that would be helpful to uh, their academics or even uh, for some um, for some programs it's more to help them in working life to adapt their social um, uh, networking uh, that kind of uh, soft skills we mm -hmm. haven't really looked into uh, like uh, even arts, uh, the, um, enhancing their art skills or, uh, you know, music skills. Because to us, arts and music is actually part of um, the technical skills that they can they can acquire. It, it's uh, uh, just like English is a technical thing that they can learn. Um, so, um, before this, all of our programs are catered towards... Uh, uh, well, most of our programs actually are catered towards um, helping uh, uh, kids that are um, uh, either underprivileged or um, or kids that are uh, somewhat problematic or have social issues. Uh, because we do have uh, we do uh, have a program where we, we adopt uh, uh, some. Uh, homes uh, that that houses all these, um, you know, uh, for, uh, orphanages or uh, you know that the the programs under JKM Jabatan Kebajikan Masyarakat, you know that kind of uh, focus uh, mm -hmm. for for kids that are um, you know uh, that has that this this who are gifted. Uh, we have we've we've never encountered such. But we have uh, talked to people who have uh, programs for, uh, example, Tafis. Uh, this is a different kind of gifted, I think. Uh, for Tafis uh, group, uh, they can um, apa ni, uh, hafal Quran with, what, in, at early age, very early age, very young age. So they portray some uh, characteristics that has been highlighted uh, by many here today on gifted kids. Mm. So uh, there are issues that we have looked at uh, for uh, what we call uh, for this Tafis group as well. Uh, mm. That are quite similar to what um, even Dr. Aya has mentioned, uh, how they are socially, uh, they need to socially adapt to like, you know, the the less gifted kids, uh, how they can um, mold themselves back to community uh, by helping others, uh, you know, uh, that that's the sort of things that we're looking at as also. Uh, but we don't have specific programs yet for uh, what we call the gifted. We are interested because it is one of the things that we, uh, I mean, Nature and developing uh, development program is actually one of the things that we look at, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have any um, experts in it yet, uh, we, but we're interested. So yeah. that's why I have like, all these questions. Uh, and it's a very good insight from even uh, uh, Karina, uh, from Dr. Aya and uh, Dr. Yati. Uh, so uh, all these experiences, it can actually help us in, uh, you know, if, if we uh, to encounter such groups, it will be very helpful. Uh, so, um, so I, so to answer your question, uh, we don't have it yet. We are, we are looking forward so that we when, can yeah. discuss further to see Inshallah. how Yayasan Peniraju could actually support us into a certain where you are very much interested in developing the soft skill later on. Maybe we will uh, have another series of discussion. Marina, I understand that that is what you are keen on. Uh, right. yeah, inshallah. We we do have other areas that we look at, but yeah, it's one of the things that we, we would like to, you know, uh, get ourselves into, lah, basically. Uh, that's why uh, I, I'm, I keep asking Dr. Aya what's the Finnish uh, uh, experience like, you know, because uh, we understand that uh, apart from the what we call the privileged kids of the, 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 the kids that are uh, uh, lucky enough to be, um, you know, uh, to be identified as gifted, there are kids who have not and they're labeled as uh, problematic at school. And I remember back in during my school days, uh, I was labeled problematic because I, I love reading so much. I didn't actually pay attention. I, I mean, I didn't look at the teachers' faces when, when they teach at, uh, in class, but I was listening. I was listening and I was reading, you know, yeah. uh, so and but then uh, it's not because I was gifted. It's just that it, like Dr. Aya said, it could be because uh, I've developed, um, you know, uh, uh, this reading skills uh, or habit early on uh, rather than later in my life. So, uh, you know, but the teachers, I was lucky because the teachers understood this. Hmm. Even at what, uh, my primary school, so that's that's why I was also happy to hear uh, uh, Karina mentioned earlier, where uh, Jabatan Pendidikan Daerah could be helpful uh, in terms of developing this mechanism to identify hmm. these kids and help out, uh, you know, uh, help the teachers diagnose, give them the tools. Hmm. Probably we can do something with the teachers, you know. Uh, rather than targeting the students itself, because I think teachers are also the, you know, the uh, they are, they are there. They are already they are going to be there for a long time. Mm. So uh, by being able to identify the kids that need extra help or mm. extra focus, um, regardless what their talents are, uh, yeah. that could be helpful in terms of making sure that there are enough supply of uh, specialists and i'm sure that is the reason why we are trying to highlight or identify uh the kids that are you know uh geniuses or gifted because yeah. we want to have that this endless the sustainable su supply of specialists in the future and right. uh, we don't want to miss like because we have identified maybe just a group of them we don't want to miss the rest um yeah so I, I think uh apart from identifying them uh as a group we need to have that mechanism as well so i think yeah. uh move i mean this talk uh, would be very helpful in for us to identify what we can do uh definitely yeah yeah definitely uh because this is only a first round of our breakfast talk i would like to ask uh usim perhaps people representative from usim could help me how do you find the uh enrollment of the children throughout the years does it increase or it gets uh, more requests from from the public to entering the, the 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 college may i know someone from usim Okay, uh, if I just may, uh, I just I just uh, share uh, our first few years of uh, operation. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually got the list from those uh, students who managed to score 130 and above from UKM1 and UKM2 uh, intelligence tests. Uh, so uh, for the first 
few years. Uh, actually, the first just, three years. Just, wait, Dr. Zul. Uh, Dr. Zul, just yeah. to update Dr. Aya, the screening test for in, um, yeah, IQ under Malaysia is called UKM1 and UKM2. That is the screening. All right. Yes. Okay, go ahead, Dr. Zul. Okay, the first uh, three years, uh, we only managed to get uh, less than 70 students for each cohort. Uh, the right. first one was like uh, only 50. Uh, okay. The second uh, batch was uh, 64. And the third batch uh, was uh, about 54. But, okay, uh, that, is, that, is, that <coughs> is the numbers that you'll be able to identify their IQ after the yes. sitting for the test, right? But yes. what, I, uh, what I'm more interested in is how is the enrollment goes in the school? I mean, in, in the college. How is the enrollment? Uh, do they all enroll the 70, all the 70, all the 64? Uh, okay, uh, we every year we, we offered uh, around 70 to 80 students uh, based on the list that we got from the UKM1 and UKM2 uh, test results. Uh, we can say that uh, for each batch, uh, maybe only less than five students uh, rejected the offer. I see. And and do they continue? I mean, the remaining, do they continue throughout the programs? Most of them, I would say 85% uh, of them uh, continued until they finish their uh, study here after five years. All right. Well, what happened to the other 15? Why why are they not continue? OK, uh, some some of the students, uh, they I mean, like we discussed just now, uh, they found that uh, things get tough uh, when it comes to the academic uh, requirement that they need to achieve uh, in order to maintain their their, their uh, results. Uh, so over the over the over the years, uh, they found that they couldn't cope with the demand uh, because they were supposed to like uh, study uh, those subjects uh, at advanced level. Uh, so most of them thought that uh, they would uh, do better if they study using the normal curriculum rather than the advanced curriculum that we are using in our college. OK, OK. So for that reason, they refuse to continue throughout the, the, the programs, which is a five years program, Dr. Zor? Yes, correct. OK, uh, is there another reason why they didn't continue along the line? Uh, some of them, I think they, they mentioned uh, personal reasons, uh, personal reasons as in uh, they couldn't stay, uh, they couldn't stay in uh, a boarding school environment, those kind of things, uh, issues with their friends. Okay, other than how, academic how is parents see the program, the advanced curriculum, how is uh, parents see, does this actually uh, a privilege for their children because they are not having the the normal curriculum what is MOE exercising right now, uh, like the mainstream school. And they have an advanced curriculum, just to get Dr. Aya to know also, the advanced curriculum where they accelerate the curriculum instead of five years of curriculum, they compact and compress the curriculum into three years. And uh, how is the parent uh, see this, this program, Dr. Zo? Where okay, they have when, 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 the, the, when the, the students first entered the college, what we did was uh, we had an engagement uh, program with the parents just to explain to them that our program is actually different. Well, we don't really focus on uh, academic achievement, actually. Uh, it is more uh, towards uh, the enrichment program so that uh, students would be able to develop their uh, inclination towards uh, the STEM subjects. So mm -hmm. we explained about the enrichment program that we had. For example, we had Oh, sorry, we have a uh, research program. We have yeah. uh, what uh, community program. program. You uh, have those, an those, those, as well, right? Mm -hmm. We actually give them the opportunity to, to develop themselves, not only academically, but they also would be able to develop themselves uh, psychologically and uh, emotionally. Yeah. But still with that supporting the academic and there's still like 15% numbers of, of enrollment refused. Yes. Oh, just because of they cannot uh, tolerate with the uh, lesson. I mean, the academic side of 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 the program. Yes, it's true. All right, all right, okay, okay. That is a good note uh, for us to see. Uh, anyone who wants to comment on that, people from Padu, anyone you want to ask further? Uh, 
Jangan. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, just just want to find out, yeah. Uh, because um, fifteen percent of the dropouts are normally due to their own reasons, uh, personal reasons, as well as the, the demand of the uh, probably the academic that they are not able to cope. Um, what about the the university or, or the college itself? Do you, um, in a way, you know, when you see that they are not uh, reaching a certain level, do you consider um, what I mean is uh, drop them out from the program because you think that they are not able to cope? Or if, if they do not come forward to stop, would you let them remain in the program? I'm just wondering in terms of that. Because um, because potential, we, we, we never know, you know, they probably will reach that potential later on and that kind of thing. And it's, it's probably um, a downtime for them at, at that particular moment and it can be picked up due to uh, them if they keep on in the same environment. But uh, does the college have or uh, make that kind of decisions? Okay, uh, so far what we do is that uh, for this uh, group of students who couldn't cope with the uh, academic uh, requirement uh, we do have uh, our support system uh, the support system comes in uh, the for, for for in terms of academic as well as uh, psychological support so we, so we do have uh, for example for psychological support we do have counselors who who will always uh, uh, advise them on for, for example if let's say they couldn't cope with the the, uh, the, the, the academic uh, demand uh, what uh, the counselor would do is to help them to with, with the study plan and those kind of things. Uh, and uh, if let's say let's say uh, they they did have uh, disciplinary problems, uh, disciplinary as in they they didn't uh, they didn't attend class, they they uh, didn't submit their assignments and all that. Uh, we actually have uh, the support uh, system uh, in terms of uh, the the uh, teachers who actually. Uh, become their uh, mentors uh, to to uh, help them to uh, improve themselves from time to time. So we don't really uh, we don't really take the action to like uh, uh, spell uh, them. Ask them. Yeah, <laughs> ask them to leave those, those kind those kind of things. We don't do that. I see. I see. Yeah, we understand. So there is some initiative where you do support them, give a support, but they still remain with their decision to leave the program. Yes, the parents and uh, the students themselves will make the final decision. I see. So uh, are they in a losing end? Because I found when they're entering at that age and they have actually an accelerated curriculum and then when they go back to the mainstream, there are probably some hiccups or some fallback on them. Don't you see that? Are yes, they... we, did, we did get feedback from those who, who left the program. Uh, they, they mentioned that uh, the program actually, sorry, our college actually has a better program compared to what they uh, experience uh, in uh, normal school. I'm, I'm not trying to say that our education system is not uh, as good as what yeah, we, yeah, we have in our college, right. but, but you know you know what I mean. I mean, uh, right. they, they miss, they miss the, the, the system that we have in our college, uh, basically. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. So I can see there is no safety net. If I could say it, I don't know whether it's a correct terms, but there is no safety net for the children as they fall back into the mainstream. Yes. Right. So, far. Right. Uh -huh. so that is quite a risk for the child when they are continuing the, the program. And then uh, you agree with me, Rotaya, right? Uh, and when we, we, we did not uphold them throughout the program, Though we don't know what is the career path for them later, uh, we have not discussed that because that is not this platform. Maybe another series where we're going to talk more, more further on that. Uh, but I can see, I could see that uh, under the current what we have in USIM, that when there is no safety net for the fallbacks of the student, especially when we talk about that 15% uh, of the child who has enrolled in USIM. So that is actually uh, kind of alarming for MOE to look into before we come and designing the model. So we are almost 12. We are two hours already uh, in this uh, breakfast talk. I appreciate everyone to be with us. So is there anyone else who wants to put up uh, anything or maybe a question to pose to us or Dr. Aya or Pon Sharifa or anyone? Here from Usim, Padu, and the rest. Shamsul, do you have anything? Uh, no, actually, 
the this morning is a quite good opportunity for us to memang uh, I I I do especially came to this session wearing a hat that we want to learn from your experience from all the expertise and to be honest there's a lot to digest uh, this morning <laughs> so thank you very much for the good opportunity I really appreciate it uh, thank you very much Fazlina for the invitation if if there are uh, next session uh, kindly invite us lah. <laughs> yes, of course. I need uh, uh. to support all along throughout the yeah. journey, you know, until uh. we can derive with our model of MOE uh, <laughs> uh, uh, later on. So, yeah. uh, Puan Sharifah, you have anything else to say? Yeah, before, because I need to go also, <laughs> because uh, at the next session. Um, I think what we can summarize, what we can hear from what has been discussed this morning is quite simply, it's quite, quite clear that um, in order to actually have the the future uh, workforce of the future that has the necessary skills, you need to start from young. And the young to MOE, it's not even part of it. And there needs to be a reach out for parents. So parent, parents nurturing is very important. And I've been invited to actually give a lot of talks on women and being an engineer, women, women, being CEO, being president, how do I cope with all this? And every time I speak, I always talk about my own experiences where the nurturing of each individual child on its own and the needs and understanding their limitations, strengths and weaknesses is very important. And uh, today, when your discussion has really, really emphasized that very, very acutely saying that, you know, it's, it's, Alhamdulillah, it's lucky that I actually went through that and I knew what to do. But imagine what about the, work, the other parents out there? So it looks as though maybe Maybe the education system, the transition of the education system is required where we already have a very uh, good platform as it is at the moment. What we need is an enhancement of it. What do they need is basically reaching out to the parents for the nurturing. How do you do that? By having this support system, like mentioned by Sapa tadi, Baru Baru ni. I think that's yeah, the, the support system to help. Uh, the um, Ministry of Education uh, mm -hmm. to, is very important to, to have that because uh, I think MOE teachers tak boleh nak cope. They have so many students and mm -hmm. reaching out. MOE as it is may not be uh, tak boleh to go forward. It needs to be a little bit uh, tweak in order to enhance the support system to allow parents to come in. We have that already in PIBG and there is a pro and con with PIBG at school because uh, <laughs> Some mm -hmm. goes into vested interest, you know, yeah. and some goes into power and things like that. So it needs to be tweaked where parents are engaged in a more uh, productive way rather than uh, power and things like that, you know. And parents are the source of people where you can actually have this support system for the gifted child, where you can actually get parents. I, I, I discovered today that the reason why I could have this nurturing environment in my own house is because my husband is a PhD student. So we, he's, he's, he can actually have this. And, and both of us are actually separate. He's on the science and I'm on the engineering, on the technical side. So we both can actually give that feedback and we allow debates in the house and it can be very heated debates on everything under the sun. So <laughs> teach, teachers is also key success to the education transition. So teachers, I think with Mazina, we've talked about this a lot uh, in all a lot of forums where I think uh, as I'm talking, I had I have always uh, I've always been invited for Yayasan Pernaju talk and I've always been uh, invited Baru Baruni from UPNM uh, last weekend uh, to talk to final year students. I think uh, teachers need very key because um, if we are talking about passion, passion as an attribute of the future workforce. Mm -hmm. In the future, AI is going to take over a lot of things. Hello, you're in at WBF 2050, Zumba okay. Institute is number one job. What all does right. that mean? Okay. Yeah. That means uh, all the technical people is going to be very less. Means only passionate people or people who are really into what they're doing will be there. So teachers are also in the same category in the sense that teachers who are really passionate about nurturing and things like that are going to be there. And the rest, you talk about, I think in the past, YouTube. YouTube teachers so that you can have equal uh, learning for all the students and things like that. So parents, teachers, very important. Counselors, education, psychology, so important. The counselors that we have at school, I think uh, needs a little bit tweaking. Bukan sahaja jadi counselling, because counselling ni tak ada KPI sikit kan. So uh, counselling is very important for the, especially for boarding schools lah eh, because yeah. um, they need to have someone to go to and, and be nurtured and not be condemned and not be labelled. And yeah. I'd like to end by saying that um, in the future, what does Malaysia need? 
Now, these gifted children that goes into very technical uh, research environment and things like that, or very specific punya experts, eh, they form 20% of the workforce. 10 to 20% sahaja. You have 80% of the workforce to be nurtured. So I think MOE also needs to put that in perspective. Whilst we have 20% of these high-end people, we have 80% of the whole the whole workforce that we need to also nurture and to be be the best of themselves. So mm. how do we actually have this? You need to put this in perspective because mm. me as an employer, I need this 80% of the workforce on maybe one or two aja from the 20%. So mm. spending a lot of resources and, and this one on this gifted, which is necessary, but don't need to create something new. You can leverage on what we have and and enhance it. Maybe sufficient having good teachers, having good counselors, having good students, but we also must nurture this 80%. So let's reach out to the parents on awareness of children education, nurturing environment too. I think it's very, very paramount for the future workforce. I think thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I don't mind being uh, part of this, but I, I don't know whether I'm contributing or not. But you know, yes, thank you, you so are. <laughs> yes, you are definitely, Puan Sharifa. Knowing your position, I know how busy you are, but your allocating time for me that is a huge thanks from me. All right? Thank okay, uh, Doctor Aya, any last word from you, Doctor Aya, before we end? Well. First, I want to thank you very much for arranging this kind of great opportunity for us to discuss. The topic is so interesting and important. And uh, um, actually, I just um, there has been so many things that we have been talking about, and I would really love to continue this conversation with you if possible in the future. But I just would, would like to end with saying that um, let's um, try to make an education system when we talk about on the national level that gives opportunities for all of our children. I see. All right. Yes. The so kind of the philosophy that everybody has the opportunity to find their talent, find their gifts, and then after they they are found, they can also develop those gift, gifts and talents. And so also the late bloomers can bloom and the ones who had a talent maybe find a second talent or third talent and keep on 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 uh, continuing on that road. So, thank you so much and um, and uh, have a have a great day, everybody. Yeah, Tataya, uh, thank you so much, everyone. So I. It's already two hours of a session uh, and it's a very good discussion this morning. And actually we have a lot more to talk about. We I only actually come into two uh, uh, section of our topic today is all about understanding the children's. How is this gifted children's looks and attitude and behave and their demand and so on. And from the parents perspective beside I also wanted to know how is the best kind of school in the broader uh, view from everyone. But we have a lot more to focus later, perhaps on what is uh, the best staff development and then how is the assessment, the flexibility of the program, how do can how we can have the curriculum uh, expectation by the students where actually covers under the IR 4.0 and so on. There are a lot more for us to discuss everyone. So please don't um, uh, get fed up with this uh, breakfast talk, though it's kind of some are very um, timid and not appear to open up your camera. I don't see any people faces. <laughs> Uh, uh, and only a few, but I would like to gauge everyone in our next breakfast talk meeting. Breakfast talk, yes, that is my boss, Anci Anan. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, to be gauged uh, on our second and third series uh, coming up. So I would like to hear the pantun from Shamsul. Yeah. Have you prepared one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not. Eh, tak, okeylah, okeylah. Sebab you dah request kan. Okay, please. Uh, Dr. Aya, Pantun is... Like, what do you call Pantun? <laughs> is it poem? I'm not sure. Is it poem or... No, something like poetry. Oh. Yeah, it's a challenge. All right. We end up with, we, we end up with one... Um, I don't know what is it. Uh, Pantun call. It's like a poetry uh, from yeah. Encik Samsul, Dr. Aya. Please, Samsul. All right, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
Sungguh gemilang bumi bertuah negeriku ini Penuh dengan bintang terang bergemerlapan Hebat terbilang ahli panel dalam breakfast talk pagi ni Semoga ada ruang dan kesempatan lagi pada masa hadapan Thank you so much, Samso. That uh, is so good and sweet from you. Okay, goodbye, everyone. See thank you, so everyone. Good. Aya, you need to get get your sleep. It's five o'clock, and what is the time now over there in Finland? Uh, seven a.m. Seven in the seven morning. Seven a.m. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry I for get some coffee and then. <laughs> yeah, I love coffee too. Thank right. you so much. Bye. All right, thank you very much, Mazlina. Thank, thank you very much. Everyone. Assalamualaikum. 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 Assalamualaikum.